In this lecture, we will know about some of the basic fundamentals of linear static analysis. So this is the first type of analysis that we perform in any FVS software and this is the most basic type of analysis. In the linear static analysis, we have two important terms. One is linear and the second is static. This type of analysis is also called quasi-static analysis. So now we are going to learn about them. What is meaning of linear static and quasi-static analysis? So linear means whenever we have a linear relationship between anything and static means whenever anything is independent of time. When we perform any analysis, we have parameter like we have force, we have displacement. So basically linear static is related to force and displacement. Whenever there is a linear relationship between, let's say I have displacement here and this is force. So on any body we apply a force and we get some displacement. And whenever the graph between this force and displacement is linear curve, it means it is a straight line. So this type of analysis is called linear analysis. And here we have static. So static means, so let's say I take this color and I have this curve here and these two curves. On the one side I have time as parameter and here is time. So here we have force and here we have displacement. So in case of static analysis, the force does not change with time. It means it is a straight line. Similarly, the displacement is also straight line. It means force and displacement does not depend on time. So these are not a function of time. That is the meaning of linear static analysis. So the quasi static analysis means very very slow process. It means very very slow. So that is the meaning of quasi static. So now let's consider an example. So here in case of we can see the force does not change with time but in real life there can be a change in the force with respect to time. So basically what software does is that it considers that the change in force so let's say the value of delta f is very well so the process is very very slow and delta f that is change between the force is very close to zero. Okay, so it means it's like 0 0.001 or anything like that. So it means the process is very slow so that there is not a significant change in the value of force. That is called linear static analysis. Now let's understand this concept in depth. The relationship between load and the induced response. So response is basically the displacement we get. So this is D is linear. For example, see whenever there is a linear relationship between F is proportional to D, it means if I double the value of force, then I will get a double of the displacement. So this is basically called the linear relationship. Now here we can see we have stress and here we have strain. So we consider this line as a straight line. So whenever this is a straight line here, so this is called linear and whenever this line is not straight, it means this is a curved line. That type of analysis is called nonlinear. So nonlinear is basically a more complicated type of analysis and we will cover this later in the course. So when we draw the governing equation for a linear analysis, we know from the Newton's equation we know that net force on a body, so this is net force equal to mass into acceleration. So here we can see the displacement that is D does not change with time. Okay, so velocity distance by time. So now when the displacement is not changing, so velocity will be zero and similarly the acceleration will be zero. So, so that is why when we perform the linear static analysis, 
this term will be cancelled. So this MA will get cancelled because A equal to 0. So it means the inertia force or the mass has no effect in linear static analysis. So that is why there is no need to define the value of density. So sometimes we define the density of material in analysis. So we don't, there is not a need to define the density in linear static analysis. But when we perform the nonlinear analysis or dynamic analysis, this term is not zero. Because in those situations, the displacement vary with time. Hence, we need to insert the value of density when we perform the dynamic simulation. So let's understand this from here. So in the linear static analysis, we have a test that is called simple tensile test. We take a specimen of any material. So let's say this is steel. So we take the steel, we, we pull it from both directions like this and then we draw a curve between strain and stress. So this is basically called the stress strain curve. Now inside this stress strain curve, we have some important points. The point A is called the proportionality limit. And then point B and C are called the yield point. D is called the breaking point and E is the fracture point. When we learn about the linear static analysis, we consider this curve up to only this proportional limit. So we consider, let's say this is a straight line. So if we go to this here, here we can see we have stress and then strain and we consider up to this only proportionality limit. And this is called the stress strain proportionality curve. And this is called the elastic limit basically up to this region. Here we can see this is called the elastic region. And Hooke's law is valid up to this region. And when we perform the linear static analysis, we insert all the property of material up to this proportional limit. And when we perform the nonlinear analysis, we go beyond this region. Because we can see after this A point, the curve is not a linear curve. So finally, we can assume that all the load are applied very slowly and gradually until they reach their fully ma full magnitude. And after reaching the full magnitude, the load remains constant. It means it is time invariant. So time is not a function here. Hence, we neglect the effect of inertia that is mass and any damping force. And the acceleration and velocities are very small that we can consider them equal to zero. And all the material property here we define is up to the Hooke's law. That is means the stress is directly proportional to the strain. Also, there is no change in the geometry. We consider when we apply the load here. So after the load application, there is no change in the geometry. These are all the assumptions when we perform the linear static analysis. Hello friends, welcome to this course on ANSYS Workbench. In this lecture, we are going to perform an analysis of plate with a hole. So here in this picture, we can see we have a plate. The dimensions of this plate are given here. And all the dimensions are in mm. Here we can see on the edge of the circle, we had applied a force in the vertical downward direction. The value of this force is given here and the dimensions of this hole is given. So diameter of this hole is 25 mm and this hole is present at the center of this plate. Now for the boundary condition, so let's say this face is fixed for this plate. And now we have to perform the analysis of this plate. The material properties for this plate are given here. We are considering the material as steel and this is the value of Young modulus Poisson's ratio. Now in case of steel, 
the yield strength of the steel is 240 megapascal so yield strength means it is the maximum stress that steel material can take and the factor of safety we are considering is 1.3 so the factor of safety we can calculate using this formula so fos is given as yield strength or the maximum strength that is yield strength and divided by working stress so working stress will be the value which will be find out in the analysis and yield strength is this value so working stress is yield strength divided by this fos so this is 1.3 so we can calculate this as 240 divided by 1.3 so this value will turn out to be it will be close to 184.6 mega pascal so in this analysis we have to check whether the plate will break or not under the applied load if the stress if the maximum stress that we calculate is more than this value of this value then the plate will break and if it is lesser than this then the plate will not break under the applied load so that is the advantage of having these values of yield strength and factor of safety now let's go to ANSYS and then perform the analysis so here I am in the ANSYS workbench so first of all I will go to this static structure pick this hold down the left click and drag this here and then I will have to create the material so I will go to this engineering data right click and click on edit here by default as we already know we have a material that is called structural steel we can also create our custom material from here I have to click on this click here to add a material so click on this I will give the name steel and then press enter after that we need to insert the properties of material so to insert the properties I will go to this left side we can go to this toolbox in this toolbox we will have to go to this linear elastic so in this lecture we are performing the linear analysis so that is why we have to select this linear properties so go to isotropic elasticity pick this and drag it to this material here we can see the yellow icons are highlighting it means we need to insert these two values first of all we can specify like we can specify young modulus and poisons ratio so we need to specify any of the two values given here so here I am specifying young modulus and poisons ratio here we have to select proper units for the young modulus we are taking mega pascal so the value is 2 1 and 4 zeros press enter and now we can see there is no yellow sign it means this value is proper after that I will go to poisons ratio and insert this value 0 0.3 press enter after that the software will automatically calculate the bulk modulus and shear modulus for this material now we have defined the material properties so I can click on this close option click on close and now we can see there is a check on this engineering data it means we have inserted the proper values after that I will go to the geometry right click and then I will go to design modeler so here we can see we have to create this plate now for this plate the dimensions are 100 105 so 5 mm is the thickness and all the dimensions are in mm and the whole diameter is 25 mm so go to the ANSYS and here I will have to select a plane so I go to the sketching option from here click on the sketching and then we can see multiple options for sketching now to create the sketch we need to select a plane so by default we have XY plane ZX plane and YZ plane so we can select any of the plane let's say I will select XY plane so click on this XY plane and now the geometry will rotate to 
xy plane so here we can see x and y planes are highlighting so first of all we need to select the proper units so i go to the units option and here we have to make sure that this is millimeter after that i will go to rectangle and then draw a rectangle like this and then i will go to dimension tab here inside this dimension we have multiple option like horizontal vertical length radius diameter and this option that is called general so this general option include all these options so i will select general and then i will select this line and then drag the mouse and click here similarly i will select this vertical line and then click here so now we have inserted these two dimensions so here in the h1 this is h1 so this value we know is 100 similarly this value is 100 and press enter so zoom out from here and in this way we can see we have created the rectangle after that i will have to create the circle to create the circle i will go to this draw option once again and i will select the circle so this circle is basically at the center of this plate so go to circle and let's say i click here and draw a circle after that we need to define the dimensions so go to dimension tab general so first of all the diam diameter here so click on the diameter now we need to specify the distance so this total value is 100 and the center will value will be 50 15 horizontal and 50 in vertical so that this circle is at the center of this plate so i will select this general option from here then hold down the control key and then select the center of this plate and then select this vertical line and now we can see this distance is highlighting similarly we need to distance it with respect to the horizontal line so hold down the control key select this center point this horizontal line and place it here now the diameter of this plate is 25 mm and this value will be 50 press enter and this is 50 so in this way we have completed the sketch after that i will go to modeling and then i will go to extrude so here we can see inside this xy plane we can see plus symbol so if i click on this plus symbol we can see sketch one so click on this sketch one and our sketch is highlighting so i will go to extrude so the depth of extrude is 5 mm we know and then i will go to the sketch option so here i will select the sketch one so inside the geometry we need to select the sketch one and click on apply now we can see extrude one is highlighting after that i will go to this generate option click on generate and now we can see we have a plate after that I will go to file and click on close design modeler and here we can see there is a check on this geometry so we can give it some name to this analysis from here after that I will go to file and then save as so in the project I will give the name plate with hole and then you can give it some name to this project plate with hole that is file 1 so you can save this project as project file and click save so in this way you can save the project so we will continue this in the next lecture hello friends welcome to this course on ANSYS workbench in this lecture we will continue from previous lecture so in the previous lecture we were solving this problem of plate with a hole so till now we had created this geometry in ANSYS workbench 
After that we are going to create the mesh and we will apply the load and boundary conditions. So I will go to ANSYS. Now inside this ANSYS we can see we have created the geometry. So if you want to work along with me you can also go to file and click on open. You can open this file that is plate with hole. So I click cancel from here. I will go to this model, right click and click on edit. Now inside this new window we can see our plate. In the left side we can see the project option is highlighting. Inside the project we have geometry, material, coordinate system, mesh, static structure etc. Now so now we are going to this geometry, click on the geometry and click on this plus symbol. So inside this plus symbol a solid is highlighting. It means this is a solid part. Now inside the solid part we can see there is material. Inside this material right now it is taking the structural steel as default material. So what I do I will click on this structural steel and then click on this arrow. Inside this we can see a list of materials. So we had created this material that is steel. So click on this material. Now we can see the material steel is applied. Below this we can see option of nonlinear effect thermal strain. So right now we are not considering any nonlinearity. We will cover this later in the course. So I will make it no on this. Similarly it is not a thermal problem so it will not take the thermal strain. So click on no from here. After that we had applied the material properties we will have to create the mesh. To create the mesh I will click on this mesh option. Now by default we have some options inside this. We can see the element sizes by default. Physical preference is mechanical and the element order is program controlled. So what I do I will go to this mesh right click and click on generate mesh. So by default the software will create a mesh. Here we can see the mesh has been created. But we can see this is not a very good mesh. We can see the flow is not good and also the element size. So what I do I can go to this element size option. So go to this default. Make sure this is click on this mesh. In the element size I will go to element size from here. So first of all I will go to this units. Go to home tab and then units. Make sure mm unit is selected mmkg newton. After that I will specify some element size. So let's say element size what I can take is 2. Now after that I will go to this mesh once again right click. We can go to update or generate mesh. So I can click on this update mesh. Now it is going to do meshing once again. So here we can see it has created a very fine mesh. So if I go to the statistics, click on this, the number of nodes are 37,000. And since it is a student version, it is not going to solve this problem because nodes are beyond 30,000 value. So what I do, I will go to this element size and let's say I will take element size 3. Mesh, right click and update. Now we can see a significant change in number of nodes and we can see this time the mesh is much better. So we can continue this analysis with this mesh. So later in the course we will learn how can we change different properties and all the types of meshing. So all these options you can see inside this insert. We can control method, sizing, contact sizing, refinement etc. So all these options we will cover later. So after that we had created the mesh, I will apply the force and boundary conditions. So I will click on the static structure and here we can apply the load and boundary conditions. So I will make a right click on this. We can say insert and here we have different types of loading like pressure, hydrostatic pressure, force, remote force, bearing load, bolt pretension etc. So first what I do I will apply the fixed support. So click on this fixed support. 
zoom in on to this and then we need to fix one of the face so what i do in the selection filter i will go to this face after that i will select this face side face and then click on apply and here we can see a boundary condition has been applied it is showing fix support after that i will apply the force so right click and click on force so click on this force option now for this force we need to apply the value and also its direction so the force is vertically downward we can go to this force here so the value of this force is 10000 newton and it is in vertical downward direction so i will go to ansys once again and here in the geometry we need to select where we want to apply this load but here first of all i will select define by in the define by i i can click on this arrow i will select component so here i can select x y z component of the force so here we can see z direction is going in the upward so we want the force that is in the downward direction for this in the z direction i will select negative 10000 newton press enter now we need to select the geometry so click on this geometry here so i want to apply the load on to this edge in the selection filter i will select edge select this complete edge and click on apply so now we can see the load has been applied and here inside this preview we can see the force after that i will go to solution right click and then insert so what i want i want total displacement once again go to solution right click and i want von mises stress so these are the output which we want for this analysis so i click on the solution right click and then go to solve so now we can see the analysis is completed and we can see check on all these options so what i do i will go to this total deformation now for this plate we can see the total deformation so what i do i will click on this graphs so i will go to this graph toolbar and click on this play pause and here we can see the animation for this analysis i can go to this result and here we can also increase the value of the scale so let's say i want to scale up so let's say i select this value and once again plate so now it is a scaled value and we can see the maximum value of displacement is 4.7 similarly i can go to this equivalent stress and once again i can play this the value of maximum stress is 1261 So now let's check whether this plate will break or not. Before this I will click on the stop. And now we can see at this location there is maximum stress. So if I go to this probe option click on this probe I can click on this maximum. So this is going to show the maximum value minimum value. I will select probe. And let's say I will select this point. this point this point here i can select multiple points here and we can see the value of stress so we can see the maximum value of stress is 1261 so once again let's go to our calculations so we had calculated so initially we had calculated that if the value of stress is, is more than 184.6 megapascal then the plate will break and right now the value of stress is 1261 so it is much larger than this value so that is 16 184.6 so now our working stress is higher than this yield strength considering the factor of safety so we can make a conclusion that the plate will break under this applied load now what we can do is we can increase the value of thickness of the plate and once again we can perform the analysis for the optimization so in this way we can perform the analysis